I am 32 years old and I don't look 32 because I look like a 40 year old woman in drag. <laughs> Yeah, it's not kidding. But uh, I grew up in South Texas. My family is, my dad's side of the family is Italian and Mexican. And my mom's side of the family is Mexican. Both my grandparents are from Mexico. So I grew up in a very traditional, very Latino and very Italian, <laughs> hot headed family with just a lot at a really young age. I just remember being like, I'm not like other boys. I'm not like my brother. I'm not I like hated him. who this is. Mm -hmm. I learned to bury this, to push it away, to push it aside, to do everything I could, sorry, contacts, um, everything I could to be what I thought I needed to be to feel safe in the world. <laughs> I went from being just a very rambunctious, fun, loud, larger than life boy to really at a young age falling into perfectionism and withdrawing. I had no friends. I didn't know how to make friends. I was very much the loner. Um, I focused a lot on school. I did things that would not put me in a situation to where I could be found out. And I didn't even know what gay was. I didn't know that that gay and and gender and all of these things are what I was struggling with. I just knew that I hated how I felt and I felt like, who I was was to blame. I, I remember describing it to my mother because she asked me to like, why aren't you Catholic anymore? I raised you better than this. I'm like, hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, I what I tell her all the time is like, I grew up only learning about the devil. He was out to get mm -hmm. you. This is how you're wicked. This is how you're sinful. You're going, you're, you know, I always argue that like really strict Catholics are like, nobody gets to heaven. Not even we get to heaven, you know? Right. <laughs> I, I was like, I remember growing up being like, man, why can't I be Methodist? They're like, we all get to heaven. That a lot of the negative messaging that I heard around sexuality and around the expectation of like what God expects of you as a man and mm -hmm. and you know all of that i i really internalized it i was very sensitive to it to where like straight people are like oh, i don't care about that shit for me i'm like oh my god they're talking about me and so i grew up believing every single word of it every single word. i internalized it i remember praying and praying and praying and praying and praying for god to fix me for god to change me and i felt like i couldn't dare share this secret and these feelings with anyone yeah. because then they would be true and you know n and it was just so much pain we call that shame when i was really young i wanted to be a princess like disney was in its heyday you know it was like every year they were punching out a disney movie like clockwork it was my favorite one was sleeping beauty and i don't know why i just think i loved like the dress and how it changed colors and i secretly wish that like the fairies were my grandma because my grandmother was just a very um, obtuse woman mm -hmm. with a lot of really awful opinions. But I, I just loved escaping in Disney princesses and I would voice that all the time. Like, I want to mm -hmm. be a Disney princess for Halloween. I want to have a Disney princess birthday party. I want, you know, I just, I would sing and I would act it out. And I was thinking like, I was like three to five years old. And I just remember my dad and my mom being like, no, this is wrong. Like people like this, do you want to grow up to be like this person? And, you know, referring to like what you'd see on Jerry Springer and this is, you're going to go to hell. This is sinful. This is wicked. And I would just remember praying for God to change me, please. Like either make me the boy that I need to be, but also like, I think it, I, what I find really funny is I used to pray like, just make me a princess. Like that'll mm -hmm. solve everything. Like if you just make me a princess mm -hmm. and just make it as if I was never Eric, I was just this pretty princess. And then I could have what I want and I would make sense. And it's so funny that as a child, I intuitively knew that maybe there wasn't something wrong with me that like it was okay to want what I want. About a year and a half sober and my sponsor was telling me like, honey, you need to start really like, finding a, a power greater than yourself. Like you don't have to call it God. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you don't considering your history. Like yeah. it just has to love you. Like it just has to love you and it has to love other people. Yeah. Because spirituality I've learned is about having a relationship with, not about what you believe. 
like it was like my body occupied that time in that space where I was that little boy. And I just felt this knowing where mm -hmm. it was like, I, I did hear your prayers and I want you to know that I was there and I never needed to change you. You were always who I wanted you to be, but I changed the world so you could be you. I believe that God is in all things. I don't believe that God is all things. It's a very different, like God is present, if you will, as like a fingerprint in everything. Like, and as a conscious being, I believe you can look for it. For example, I'll give you an example. So for example, I don't think that God was like, I'm gonna create a pandemic. Like there's free will. Mm -hmm. But what I do believe is that God exists with us in this pandemic and it's through love and not fear. I believe sometimes God is a perspective by experiencing what God isn't through like all of that shame and that judgment and that dogma of my childhood. I feel like I now have a more loving and inclusive reality of God today. Mm -hmm. There is a profound difference between having a set of rules and rigidity and actually humbling yourself and having a dependence and a relationship with something bigger than yourself. And I believe it's getting more and more divided. I don't want to scare the shiitake mushrooms out of anybody, <laughs> but you know, when I look at the world, I realize man, there are either people who are seeking something bigger than themselves or they don't know that they're in hell. Yeah. Trying to fill everything in them with everything other than who they are. There are so many things that we can do to break down the stigma and the shame, number one, around mental health, particularly where it intersects with identity and shame, uh, substance use disorder, and eating disorders, which I think statistically are very high in our community as a way to cope. And I also believe that in breaking down the shame and the stigma around mental health, that we can also work within the framework of what we have to create new resources and bridge the gaps between higher costs of care and what people can actually access. Yeah. You know, I'm very public about this. I had a life-threatening eating disorder as a result of a lot of the shame and the trauma that I grew up with. Um, mm -hmm. I was hospitalized in and out of medical facilities because there really wasn't anything for, in the early 2000s, for m young males with eating disorders, particularly in South Texas. There just did not exist. It just did not exist. And so it wasn't until I was 18 and on my own because my family didn't like that I was a homosexual that I found a therapist who saw me for free for three years until I had a firm grasp on eating disorder recovery. And once upon a time, I needed to hear a story like mine and I knew it existed. I just don't think people had the same tools and resources that I was being given by obvious, like now I see it as a power greater than myself. This is, this is a profound time of grief. I don't care what color, religion, you know, uh, any back, like we're, I think we're all learning that we are either trying to be one human family or we're falling apart. And I saw a really beautiful meme, quote, gif, I don't know, not, I went to public school. Um, so I saw, and it said, quit, we're all in the same storm, but we're not in the same ship. Mm. And I think that's a beautiful way to describe privilege. We are spending time with myself because there was still levels and layers of my own self-rejection and internalized phobia of myself and, and things that like, I just did not know how to feel. Mm -hmm. I did not know how to press pause. And then all of a sudden there was this moment where the world just hit pause yeah. on everything. And it was so scary and it was so loud. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've learned to keep the focus on myself, but I would argue for a lot of people. No. And there was this, this moment where everything and anything that I had placed my identity in was just not there. There was no more drag shows. There was no more school. There was no more performing. There was no more working. There was just faith that I was gonna stay sober, 
that at least I had my recovery. I had a power greater than myself. I remember sitting on the edge of my bed going, you know what? This is a great opportunity for you to prove to me that you got my back because I literally have no answers. If yeah. you don't get this from anywhere else, hopefully you get it from us here today. There is absolutely nothing wrong with who you are. God is love. 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 If God is anything, it is love. It is not condemnation. It is not rejection. It is not fear. It is not abandonment. And the most powerful thing that I've had to learn in my own journey is the power of forgiveness, forgiving myself first for hating my 11 year old chubby Latinx self for being mm -hmm. queer and not wanting to play basketball and wanting to be a dancer or volleyball player or whatever, but also recognizing that my family and my culture was also centered in fear. It is not something to hate. It is not something to condemn. It's just fear. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine the pain of my mother to be afraid to love her child for who he is. That sounds awful. I know how hard it was for me to even learn to love myself for who I am. And so I just want to say you are not alone. Find people who are just as colorful as you are. There is a difference between condemnation and conviction. Mm -hmm. Condemnation is... If there was, if there is a devil, it's the closest thing to devil on earth. This, you are not enough. You, God does not want you. you. There are things about you that God rejects. Conviction has so much love and it shows you the way to something more beautiful, more fulfilling and more reliable than whatever false beliefs or negative things that you've adopted to believe about yourself will ever get you. Those are the God of my understanding loved me the exact same when I was sleeping around for self-esteem and doing drugs and drinking because I hated myself. My God loved me the same then as he does today. And who I am today was also in that version of myself too. I could not have gotten here today if it was not for that version of myself. Mm -hmm. And I view drag as a, as a liberation for me because when I, when I share this moment with other people like myself, such as you, it's so healing because once upon a time, I learned a trick through this. <laughs> once upon a time, I felt so ashamed and so alone. And what I've learned is it's not about finding the answers. It's about learning to celebrate life with people who have the same questions as you. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, putting on this makeup and putting on this character is a way for me to celebrate all of who I am. Yeah. And, and it's a way, it's about bringing out those parts of my soul and those parts of myself that I thought God and the world wanted nothing to do with. And I shoved them into a closet. There was this one drag brunch where I saw this mom and this dad and their son, and they were Latin mm -hmm. and Latino. And he was like no more than 10 years old and he was just smiling and lighting up and handing me and all the other drag queens dollars and the mom was just having a good time and the dad was having a good time. Uh -huh. And it was so healing and so powerful because I thought, holy shit, like mm -hmm. this is all worth it. Yeah. Just to be able to see that, just know that there are people in this world who are different and making change and loving their child and bringing their child to a drag show. And, and there was just so many similarities and it was like seeing a different side of myself when I was younger. And it was just like, I just like thanked them for being such awesome parents and like, um, and for, for being here and supporting us. It was, yeah. I mean, you just gotta show up to see it. True wow. spirituality is 24 seven. It's not just something you do on Sunday. It's not just something right. you pick up when you walk into a building. You're either walking the walk and living in communion with a power greater than yourself, which includes other people, people who don't look like you, people who don't sound like you, people who don't come from a, the background that you come from. You allow yourself to be uncomfortable and you do your best 